In Matthew 18, 21 through 24, 27, 33, 32 through 35. Then Peter came to him and asked the Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? That means just for one time I'm going to be upright. For one time I'm going to be useful. Come on, somebody. For one time I'm just going to live holy. One time I'm going to overcome them. One time I'm going to reproduce. One time I'm going to be guided. One time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be permanent. No, it's a perfected thing. Every time you make a lap around this thing, you're coming closer to being like him. That's right. Amen. And Jesus says this, no. He replied, 70 times 7. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his account up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. And there was one servant there that owed millions of dollars, the scripture said. And the king, he came and begged and pleaded for forgiveness. And the Bible says the king was filled with pity for him and released him and forgave his debt. What a good God we serve. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you something. Ain't no way you and I can catch up on all that we've done wrong. But he paid the debt full at Calvary and he pronounced us all as forgiven. That we have to receive it by faith. Here's where the 70 times 7 comes into play. Now, this man is free, released, and forgiven, and he leaves, and he goes and finds somebody that owes him. And his creditor wouldn't wait. Because he went to him, he said, Now you pay up me. And I think it was thousands of dollars compared to millions. And he said he said he wasn't so much that he, he strangled him, the scripture says. And his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested, jailed until the debt could be paid in full. Now do you get what I'm talking about? It's, it's always good as long as God does it to us. But I'm going to tell you something. We need to let mercy knock at somebody else's door too. And the Bible says in verse 32, the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant. I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have, have shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I have mercy on you? Amen. I'm telling you right now, 70 times 7. And you say, so that means when it stops at 490, I'm good. No, that means by the time if you have to forgive people 490 times in one day, yep. That's right. That's right. you ain't gonna have no problem with it next time it comes around. And he says here, and the, and the angry king sent the man to prison until he paid every penny. Amen. And the Bible says that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters in your heart. Here's the problem. The disease of Christianity or the... No, 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 no. I ain't gonna phrase it. No, no, not you. <laughs> the, the disease of church of people is this. I call it the Pentecostal path. You're scared to get close to somebody because they might violate you. Well, let me tell you something. God has always been faithful to me. But I have always been faithful to him. But yet he's been giving me mercy after mercy after mercy. But yet we conditionalize our mercy. Let me see if he deserves it or not. Well, he's got a Georgia shirt on, so thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> what am I trying to tell you this morning is, amen, when it comes to God, you don't get to pick and choose who you give mercy to. Come on. Because if you're in Ilium, you're there to get a revelation of how 